For this pumping problem, we have a tank that looks a little bit different, but if you can think of a swimming pool that has a deep end and a shallow end, it's kind of like that. It has a flat, rectangular top to it, and then the base slopes from no depth here over to a depth of six feet on the other side. So it's kind of like a zero entry pool that has a shallow end and a deep end. In other words, it looks like a wedge that you might slide under a door or something like that. But otherwise, the problem is, just like the ones we've done before, we want to pump all the water out of this tank. And I made a note that it's full of water right to the brim, so we're going to pump it out over the edge, just like we've done before. And we want to find the work that's needed to do that. Just like before, we need to pick a position to put our origin x and measure from there. So we could put it at the top of the tank or the bottom of the tank. And of course, since the top of the water is, is at the top of the tank, that's kind of the two logical places to put it. We could put it anywhere else we wanted, but those two are the most natural. To do this, let's do like we did before and put the origin at the bottom of the tank with X measured upward. Just like before, it will make the geometry a little bit easier just like the one with the cone that we did before. You could of course try placing the origin at the top and see if you get the same answer and you should as long as you're careful. So as we've done before we start by taking a slice and we've practiced doing slices with volumes before so it shouldn't surprise you that the slices for this thing will look like rectangles. No matter where we slice it it always looks like a rectangle. Remember we're slicing them like this so that delta x is a small vertical distance. The dimensions of this rectangle, the width of it, the front face, will always be 10 feet. And that's because the front side of this tank, the side closest to us, is a consistent 10 feet, and so is the back side. So it's rectangular, those sides don't change. What does change is this other length, L. Because at the top of the tank, the very uppermost slice will be 10 feet by 12 feet. But as you go deeper into the tank, those slices will end sooner and sooner as that back wall comes closer and closer until at the very bottom of the tank, that length will be zero. And we'll take advantage of that to calculate what that L is in relationship to X. So just like before, that length will depend on X. And again, notice that it changes linearly. So it will be something like MX plus B. To calculate that, we can again use the algebraic or geometric approaches. Just for sake of time here, I'm gonna to stick to the algebraic approach where we know the length at two places. When x equals 0 at the bottom of the tank, we know that L equals 0. And when x equals 6 at the top of the tank, we know L equals 12. And that's just based on the geometry of the picture we're given. We know the tank is 6 feet high in total, and the longest length is 12 feet there at the top. Again, notice that because we chose the origin at the bottom, where the length was 0, that simplifies things for us just a little bit because our intercept will be zero. When x is zero, l is zero. And then for the slope, we just need to find the difference in l divided by the difference in x. The difference between the two l values is 12. The difference between the two x values is six. So that works out to two when we simplify it. So very simply, l just equals 2x. So this one's not too complicated. The answers work out to nice simple numbers, at least so far. Once we have that, we can take the same approach we've done before, where we find the weight of this one slice. The force is going to be 62.5, the unit weight times the volume. And then we can calculate the distance and combine them to find work. The volume of this rectangular solid is just like a box. It will be length times width times height. 
So 62.5 times length times width times height. The length we know is 2x. The width is a constant 10. And the height, that's delta x, our thickness. So the force is pretty much done. Let me simplify a little bit and call this 625 times 2x delta x. And of course we could combine the 625 and the 2 as well, but it may be that the 2x in the integral will be simpler for us. We'll wait and see what happens there. Then for the distance, we can go back to the picture. And just like we did before, if x starts at the bottom and we're measuring upward, the total distance we're trying to lift it is 6 feet. So if we've gone x feet up and cut a slice, the total distance up to the top must be 6 minus x, so that when you add those together, you get a total of 6. So the remaining distance from x to the top is the total distance minus how far we've gone already, so 6 minus x. Again, once you've done a few of these, you start to see the same patterns emerge over and over again, and so you can save yourself some effort in thinking through each problem. Let me pause here and think about what would happen if we had placed the origin at the top of the tank. In that case, the distance would just be x, and the expression for L would be slightly more complicated because we would basically swap these two, making the slope be the opposite of what it is. So the slope would be negative 2, and the intercept would then be 12 because we'd have that point 0, 12 as one of our points on the table. So in that case, L would be negative 2x plus 12. But if you make those changes and continue consistently with that, it turns out you get the same answer as the one we're going to find in just a minute. So it's important to be flexible and be able to use different positions for the origin as long as you recognize what changes happen when you do so. We have the force and the distance, so the work will be the integral of their product. So we have 625 times 2x times 6 minus x, delta x becomes dx, and then we just need limits of integration. Coming back to the picture, the limits of integration where the water starts and stops are when x equals 0 at the bottom of the tank and x equals 6 at the very top because the water goes all the way to the top edge. So the limits of integration are from 0 to 6. And then we can go through and integrate. Again, you would multiply out. So I'll pull out the 625 and maybe the 2 as well. And then you would have 6x minus x squared dx. And that integral is very simple. I will skip the details in between and just tell you you should get 45,000 pound feet. And you should practice working that out, but the integration is very simple and you've done ones just like that many, many times. So again, the difference between any two of these pumping problems really comes down to the geometry of the slices. What do those look like? Once you take on that geometry problem, the rest of the process works very similarly. The force is just the unit weight times volume and then the distance you figure out from the picture as well. Multiply them together and integrate to find the work.